Derry, London Derry, Durakaran Kelly. Behind the name, there is the legend. Behind the legend, there is St. Columba. The city now proudly boasts a centre which explains the man, the myth and the legend. All thanks to a dedicated team of people inspired by his story. A centre and building which in its own right has a rich history. From its past life as a school to years of lying and ruin. And finally, a 12-year journey to bring it back to life. My name is Brian McCaffrey, and I'm the chairperson of the Alice Colin Hill Trust, who were responsible for developing this building and the heritage of it. I do believe that, you know, Derry has one of the most amazing uh, legacies of history of of any city that I can think of. Well, you know, I mean, you can talk about all the things that you know, Derry's famous for, music and whatever else, but if you just wanted to concentrate purely on the history, I don't think you're going to get in one place such a wealth of history, considering I just want to say that this place, as we are reminded, is one of the longest continuously inhabited places in Ireland. Columba is a saint who is Accept, I mean, he's accepted by both sides. You've got us in Columns Cathedral, you've got St. Columbus Long Tower Church. That's just to give you sort of one small example. One interesting thing I read about oh, six or seven years ago, I was published by the Daily Telegraph. Daily Telegraph did a survey in England, I remember this is, and they were talking about um, who did people think should be the top 10 people to be studied by school children. Who was number one? I couldn't believe it. Columba. Make no mistake about it, this guy did things that were extraordinary in the life of the times that went. First of all, he was part of the monastic settlement that was responsible for wonderful books like the Book of Kells, which is considered nearly a wonder of the world, and there's a facsimile copy of it in there. He was responsible, for example, he was one of the first people to um, uh, record history in a chronological fashion. They were called the annals, and there's a set of annals at the far side of that there. Uh, they're, they're obviously they're not as old as Columba, but their set of annals. That was the idea that history should be recorded, you know, on a chronological basis. He, that was his idea. The success of many museums lies in the stories they tell. Few stories bear the importance of Columba's. Not only in the city he is said to have founded but also on a global scale. This year, school at this building began life in 1826 as a school and remained a school until 1894 when the students that were here were moved to a new school just up the, up the chapel yard. For a few years then, it was used by parish groups and then it was deemed unsafe. So its doors closed for good. It lay in a gap there for quite a number of years and I was watching it all those all through those years. Bits of it were falling off. Bits of window cells were they'd be there today and they'd be gone tomorrow. Uh, we had the two very bad winters in twenty twelve was it twenty eleven, and the, the school suffered severely, and it became a death trap. No one could enter it. The centre became a reality, in a sense, by the use of great resilience, determination, uh, refusal to be daunted, cheek, uh, brass neck, um, and an amazing wealth of support from all sorts of people. A recognition that there was something very worthwhile here that we didn't want to lose the opportunity of doing. First of all, you had a beautiful building dating from 1813, which has a wonderful history of its own. Uh, so the, the, build, the building was falling down, the building was utterly derelict. I think another winter and the building would have collapsed. So we had a beautiful building to start with. And then we had, if you like, a meaning to put into the building associated with this site. So as far as I could see, that was a win-win situation. 
this building alone has been rescued for posterity and it has enhanced the surroundings, it's enhanced the grounds of the Long Tower Church, which is an interesting church in its own right. We have restored a beautiful listed set of steps down the side of the building. It is a listed building as well. And we have saved another building for Derry, where so many of the beautiful old buildings have been destroyed. Thanks to the dedication and commitment of the heritage team, the former Wee Nun School has been saved from ruin and preserved for future generations to enjoy. The transition was, it lay empty, it lay derelict, and it suffered all the perils of winter. His story has been brought to life in this modern museum. Columbus past is chronicled on the computerised displays and walk-through exhibits found in the centre. The journey to bring this centre to life was a difficult and arduous one at times. Although it does cost more to rescue an old building, there isn't any doubt about it, but what you rescue keeps all the appeal of the past and preserves it for the future, which is really what we were trying to do. A lady called Grania McCafferty, chairperson of the Irish Column Kill Board, got funding to bring this old building back to life. She spent 10, 12 years trying to get funding and succeeded finally, and this is what we have today. This project came up and somebody said, would you like to be chair? I took on the chair, whatever. And we, we bid for funds. I mean, we, have, we got 1.6, 1.7 million pounds of public funding, Heritage Lottery Fund, Northern Ireland Tourist Board, Northern Ireland Environment Agency, the Diocese of Derry put in some money, Derry City Council. So that, that's the funding bit of it. But it did take a massive amount of time then to get the funding together. But then also with the help of people, for example, from the local Heritage and Museum Services here, you know, what story were we going to illustrate? What artefacts had we got? Because obviously if you're going to talk about Colin Kill, there are no artefacts left from that time. See the number of volunteers that we had. I mean, first of all, the Board of Trustees, they're all volunteers. They have all worked as hard as can be. Some of them for longer than others. Some of them are, are older, like myself, and have worked for the 12 or 14 years. Totally, totally free of charge, totally volunteers, meetings, papers, write this, write that, put in that bed. There's an immense uh, pride in this place, pride that comes from the community, the, 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 the past pupils. Uh, so the, the, the sheer, um, that helped to float the whole thing. Of course the funding floated it, couldn't have worked without the funding. But that wealth of support, both in people who volunteered to support us, or people who simply turned up on the open day to say, this is lovely, that all is extremely important. The building is gorgeous. That's a great tribute to the builders, Woodvale builders, and to the architects, HMD. What is it that we were trying to do? We were trying to save the old building, but in order to save it, we also had to give it a new lease of life. You know, we had to give it a purpose. There's no point in renovating an old building. You won't get public money to renovate an old building and then close the front door. The big dream is to keep it going and to make it self-sustaining. That's my big dream. This building began life 201 years ago. And my hopes are that in 200 years time, this building will still be here. It is now a Columban Interpretive Centre. And maybe it'll be a Columban Interpretive Centre in 200 years time. And I hope it is. But the one thing I do, I really do hope that it survives, at least it survives, and it has given a chance now to survive. The centre now stands as a must-see attraction in the city, one that can be enjoyed by all ages, and one that can inspire and show all who visit just what can be achieved with hard work and dedication.